Hi guys, it's the fan here. This is a nice little photo I took some time ago in my hometown of Virrat in Finland. It's a nice looking place and it's a serene, serene looking picture, really peaceful and nice. So naturally we are gonna talk about something, something here that would never ever make anybody angry or cause any sort of controversy. Oh yeah, we are talking about gay marriage, or as I like to call it, marriage. Uh, you'll notice this is a little bit of a different format from the other rambling videos I've made, because I'm not playing a game right now, I'm actually... We're gonna surf the, surf the internet. Well, not so much surf, we're gonna go to this one page and read the fun stuff there. Ta-da! Uh, this is a site called massresistance.org. I'm gonna include the link below this video, so you can go and see for yourself. I'm not <laughs> bullshitting you. And uh, this is a pro-family activism that makes a difference. It's a Christian group of some description, <laughs> and uh, they have made this uh, uh, what's the word booklet about what gay marriage has done to Massachusetts. I, if you can see here, it says, it's far worse than most people realize. Dun, dun, dun! Lucky for us, they have actually made the whole text of the booklet available on this page here. So we're gonna go through this. There's a fair bit here, but it's kind of amusing. So we're gonna do this. Uh, let's see, that starts from... <laughs> well, first of all, this is kind of amusing here, the introduction text. Uh, it exposes the shocking and outrageous changes that have taken place throughout society in Massachusetts since the infamous Goodrich court ruling imposing gay, gay marriage. <laughs> yeah, we just... <laughs> this, uh, you'll, you'll notice this uh, running team here, they really like their quotation marks, gay marriage. Most people are completely unaware and the homosexual lobby wants to keep it that way. Okay, so yeah, the full text is here. Let's start it. This is by Brian Kamenker from October 2008, actually, but it has been updated in as er, as uh, late as 2012, so... Wow. Anyone who thinks that same-sex marriage is a benign eccentricity which won't affect the average person should, con should consider what it has done to Massachusetts since 2004. Uh, yeah, this is, uh, this is one of those things where uh, one of the... One of the better arguments, in my opinion, for legalizing gay sex, mar gay sex. legalizing same-sex marriage, or gay marriage, choose one. Uh, one of the better arguments is that it's an expansion of human rights to a group of people that uh, have not traditionally had that right, and it's one. It's a thing that doesn't actually take anything away from the normal average citizen. It doesn't take anything away from people who are not part of that group. However, in Massachusetts, Brian Kamenker and his pals are about to prove that wrong. It's become a hammer to force acceptance and normalization of homosexuality on everyone. The slippery slope is real. New radical demands never cease. What has happened in the last several years is truly frightening. Oh dear. Well, let's start with the public schools. The homosexual marriage onslaught in public schools across the state started soon after. Okay, first case. At my own children's high school, there was a school-wide assembly to celebrate same-sex marriage in early December 2003. Featured an array of speakers, including teachers at the school who announced that they would be marrying their same-sex partners and starting families, either through adoption or artificial insemination. Literature on same-sex marriage, how it is now a normal part of society, was handed out to the students. So, yeah, yeah, teachers do actually form relationships with their students. Uh, well, the kind of relationships where they deem it. Uh, I'm wording this terribly. Teachers do tend to tell students when they get married. And, you know, <laughs> that's just normal. And yeah, literature was handed out that say how. Tell them that same-sex marriage is a normal part of society, which it is, so yeah. Okay, second point. Within months it was brought into the middle schools. Uh, in 2004, an 8th grade teacher 
told National Public Radio that the marriage ruling had opened up the door for teaching homosexuality. In my mind, I know that okay, it is legal now. If somebody wants to challenge me, blah, I'll say okay, give me a break, it's legal now. Uh, she added that she now discusses gay sex with her students as explicitly as she desires. For example, she said she tells the kids that lesbians can have vaginal intercourse using sex toys. So uh, I think the key word missing here is uh, sex education. Actually, we can see it. they have uh, to this page is great. They have source links of a kind, even though it's on the same actually on the same domain. But uh, let's see the homosexual marriage agenda. Let's see they. Yeah, they have, <laughs> they have highlighted. Uh, 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 there was something here, I think. She's been, she's already been teaching a gay-friendly curriculum for nearly a decade. <laughs> oh dear. She says the debate around gay marriage is prompting kids to ask a lot more questions, like what is gay sex, which Alan answers thoroughly and explicitly with a chart. And on the side, I'm going to draw some different activities like kissing and hugging and different kinds of intercourse. <laughs> so... <laughs> oh dear. Okay, so yeah, it's... Yeah, it's called sex ed. And, you know, it's good to teach that to kids. <laughs> By the following year, it was in elementary school curricula with hostility toward parents who disagreed. Uh, kindergartners in Lexington Mass were given copies of a picture book Who's in a Family. Let's go look at that book. I think they have some copies. Okay, so it looks like a book. Yeah. Family can... Uh, I don't know if you can see the text. Uh, family can be made up in many different ways. Yeah. Uh, I, can, I can barely make this text out myself, actually. Laura and Kyle live with their two moms, Joyce and Emily, and a poodle named Daisy. It takes all four of them to give Daisy her bath. Yeah. Robin's family is made up of her dad, Clifford, her dad's partner, Henry, and Robin's cat, Sassy. I think. I can barely make it out. This, this, these are so small, the scanned pictures here. Clifford and Henry take turns making dinner for their family. My god! They're teaching this to the children! <laughs> <laughs> oh god, this is this is hilarious. Okay, let's see. Also, actually, this thing goes on. We are giving copies of a picture book, telling them that same-sex couples are just another kind of family, just like their own parents, which is true. Yeah. When David Parker, parent of a parent, 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 parent of a kindergartner calmly refused to leave a school meeting unless officials agreed to notify him when discussing homosexuality or transgenderism with his son, the school had him arrested and jailed overnight. <laughs> because kindergartens surely have the authority. They called the kindergarten police and they took him to a little foam jail cell. Let's see. Uh, he's in handcuffs before a judge. Okay, that's still me. I think... Summary of what happened. On April, Lexington Baron David Parker was arrested and charged with trespassing at his son's elementary school during a scheduled meeting with the principal and the town's director of education over his objections to homosexual curriculum materials. Uh, Parker had asked for notification and possible opt-out for his son for homosexual curriculum or ad hoc discussions by Ada. Wait, what? Parker had asked for notification and possible opt-out for his son for ad hoc discussions. I think ad hoc means like stuff that isn't pre-planned. So, uh, <laughs> so, so what we're what, what we're talking about here is that whenever a teacher is talking with her with their students and something about homosexuality comes up, they should actually call David Parker and tell him about that so he can opt his son out of the discussion. Oh god, this is making my head hurt. Let's see, after several months of communication, he was told that his requests are not possible. Not possible in quotation marks. He finally said he would not leave the meeting until this was resolved. So, uh... <laughs> That's... <laughs> So yeah, so it actually, I, I, actually, I would imagine if you're in a meeting at, at on, on an evening somewhere in a school, 
and the meeting is over and you have not gotten your way and you decide to just stay there, <laughs> then yes, you will at some point be trespassing. Parker was arraigned. When he informed Judge Robert McKenna that he had not been allowed to call his lawyer, the judge scolded for not being respectful. Uh, I don't know what that is about, but that's certainly just another thing that the uh, gay, the, what was it called, the gay, let me see, the homosexual lobby, yeah, the homosexual lobby surely made that happen. <laughs> Events leading up to the arrest, I just don't even care. Okay, let's see, there's even more pages here. Near the end of meeting, school officials nego negotiated an agreement with parent, then superintendent refused to sign it, had Parker arrested instead. After the first hour, Tonya Parker left the meeting and went out and sat in her car. During this time, as the meeting continued, David continued to discuss the progress of the meeting with her via cell phone. What the fuck is that even about? <laughs> There's a picture here and the text says, David Parker, right, in meeting with school officials, telephones wife out in parking lot during what he thought were good faith negotiations. Why is the wife in a car? I don't, I don't know. As the meeting seemed at a stalemate, the principal and director of education seemed to change course. Seemed to change course. Okay, that's not a sentence that makes sense. Although they they had claimed they did not have the authority to allow David Parker to be informed, they suggested that the superintendent did have the authority to agree at least until the full process of appealing to the school committee went through. So they had David handwrite an agreement, which they discussed with Superintendent William Hurley over the telephone and then faxed to him. David was glad to believe that Hurley was going to sign this, but instead he called back saying he rejected it, and they decided to have David arrested for trespassing. Okay, there's the agreement, so there's... <laughs> I, I'm, I'm, trying to, I'm trying to just figure out how this whole sequence of events happened. <laughs> they are... Uh, the both parents are there inside in a meeting for an hour. And then the wife leaves and goes to sit and sit in their car for some reason. I have no idea why, but she's still on the phone with David, who's inside. And then David had writes an agreement. Are we, uh, yeah. Okay, so yeah. The, uh, the undersigned agree that we will not only be notified when these discussions are planned, but in addition agrees to an automatic opt-out for a ch child when such discussions arise spontaneously to be enforced by those in authoritative control. So yeah, that seems... That seems really fucking stupid. That that does not seem like something that could be actually worked out in, in practice in the, in the school. But however, uh, they sent that to the superintendent who says, probably says that says as much, I don't know what he said, but instead he, uh, he called back and say, no, we won't sign this, arrest him. Right. Uh, what else do we have? Do we have anything in interesting here? Before arrest takes place, police officer Per principal's order approaches David Parker's wife sitting in car and sternly orders her off school property or risk arrest herself. Uh, yeah, I don't, Whatever. I don't. <laughs> at the very least, they are omitting a lot of stuff there anyway. And that, that was actually all over this picture book here. I mean, like, Clifford and Henry take turns making dinner. <laughs> That's awful. That's awful. People are getting arrested over that. Okay, let's keep going. It's a long list and <laughs> I don't know if you <laughs> have the patience to go through all this with me. The next year, second graders at the same school were read a book, King and King, about two men who fall in love and marry each other, ending with a picture of them kissing. When parents complained, they were told that the school had no obligation to notify them or allow them to opt their child out. Let's see this horrible book. Oh my god, it looks awful. Uh, okay, that's... The book starts out with the queen nagging her unmarried son, the prince, that he needs to get married. When I was your age, I'd been married twice already. <laughs> okay, queen brings in princesses. 
uh, and but then one princess brings her brother along. At last, the prince felt a stir in his heart. It was love at first sight. And then the prince marries the gay guy, and then they, well, they do something behind that heart, but it might be kissing. <laughs> that's, that's that's awful. That's horrible. Uh, okay, yeah. So next bit. The federal judge ruled that because of gay marriage in. In 2007, a federal judge ruled that because of gay marriage in Massachusetts, parents have no rights regarding the teaching of homosexual relationships in schools. Previous year, they had filed a civil rights lawsuit to force them schools to no notify parents. Okay. The appeals judges later. Up, let's see. The federal judge dismissed the case. Okay, let's see what's behind this link. Oh, there's a lot of text here. Yeah, we're not even going to go there. It's just. Basically, the parents want to be notified and allowed to opt out of uh, teaching of homosexual relationships. And the judges call that out as ridiculous, because it is, and yeah. Okay, let's move on. School libraries have also radically changed. School libraries across the state from elementary school to high school now have expanding shelves of books to normalize homosexual behavior and lifestyle in the minds of kids. Some of them quite explicit and even pornographic. Yeah, let's take another look. <laughs> no, not that link. Sorry, wrong link. This one. Pornography! They're kissing! They're both men! One of them even has a goatee! Yeah, okay. <laughs> See where it is. There's, there's actually, there's no, uh, as you'll notice, there's no source links here, so I don't know what kind of pornographic books they have in the school libraries. <laughs> yeah, elementary schools have gay porn now in the libraries. Sure. Largely cardcover books celebrating Massachusetts homosexual marriages began to appear in many school libraries across the state. Titled Courting Equality, it was supplied to schools by a major homosexual activist organization. Its apparent purpose was to teach kids that gay marriage was a great civil rights victory. Yeah, because it was. Let's take a look. They probably have some. Oh! Wow, this link actually went to courtingequality.com and not, the, not their own. I'm I'm surprised because all the other source links actually went back, went to a page on their own site. So, well, that's interesting. Anyway, let's keep moving. It has become commonplace in Massachusetts schools for teachers to display photos of their same-sex spouses and occasionally bring their spouses to school functions. At one point, both high schools in my own town had principals who were married to their same-sex partners, who came to school and were introduced to the students. I mean, can you believe <laughs> they're actually introducing gay people to students? <laughs> Gay days in schools are considered necessary to fight intolerance against same-sex relationships. Uh, hundreds of high schools and even middle schools across the state now hold gay, lesbian, bisexual and transgender days. In my own town, a school committee member announced that combating homophobia was now a top priority. The schools not only celebrate homosexual marriage, but have moved beyond to promote other behaviors such as cross-dressing and transsexuality. I'm pretty sure transsexuality isn't a behavior. Well, okay, I'm not sure these things are com are complicated, but what I do agree is that combating homophobia is should be a top priority, <laughs> based on pages such as this one that we're reading right now. Okay, let's see. As a result, many more children in Massachusetts appear to be self-identifying as gay. The percentage of kids identifying as gay who had same-sex contact rose by approximately 50 percent between the years 2005 and 2009. Yeah, I don't actually, let's see, okay, this is another link that just goes to their own page. Uh, there's, a, there's the entire survey here. Yeah, I think it's safe to say that the amount of gay <laughs> children did not actually rise. It's just that since at least some people are showing more tolerance, it might actually be easier for for the gay children to come out as such. Because luckily they still have people unlike the guys who made this page. 
Let's see, once homosexuality is normalized, all boundaries begin to come down. <laughs> the schools have already moved on to normalizing transgenderism. The state-funded commission of gay GLBT youth, which goes to schools with homosexual and transgender progress and activities, includes prominent activists who are transsexuals. Yeah, that's also, also, also not really a bad thing, in my opinion. <laughs> Let's see, in 2006, a cross-dressing man undergoing a sex change operation was brought into a third grade class to Newton to teach the children that there are now different kinds of families. School officials told the mother that her complaints to the principal were considered inappropriate behavior. Yeah, they probably were. In Let's see the link here. A cross-dressing man undergoing a sex... Oh, holy shit, that's a long text here. Let's hope. Let's see. I'm trying to see if there's anything about how the mother actually uh, protested. Emma did what any normal responsible parents would do. She demanded an explanation from the principal. She and several other parents met with the principal who responded defensively and fully packed her staff member. Yes, good. Emmer then went to Superintendent Young's office with her concerns. She handed Mr. Young a written description of what happened, whereupon the superintendent promised to respond to her soon. He didn't. So after three weeks, she called to make an appointment. As Emmer described it, Mr. Young remarked that the parental consent law didn't apply to the situation because he claimed the topic of discussion was not planned for. He concluded that it, that it was really just a teachable moment. Uh, okay, I don't, I, I don't intend to get get non-biased information from there anyway, so whatever. Actually, that is, that's the results for public schools. I don't actually see anything bad here except for the parents freaking out over nothing. Let's see if there actually is, well, I mean this, just to remind you guys this, about what the same-sex marriage has done, this, it's far worse than most people realize. So, I would assume there's something actually bad further in the booklet here. Something to, you know, something to make me change my mind about uh, same-sex marriage or marriage equality. So far, nothing. Okay, let's see. Public health. This is a short one. The commissioner of the Mass, Mass Department of Public Health, who is married to another man, told a crowd of kids at the state-sponsored Youth Pride event that it's wonderful being gay, and he wants to make sure there's enough HIV testing available for all of them. Okay, that sounds reasonable. The STD test required to obtain a marriage license was eliminated five months after the same-sex marriages began in Massachusetts by a bill quietly signed by Governor Mitt Romney. This was despite an increase in civil cases and other STDs. You know, wait, what? <laughs> oh God, this is this, this one of those, probably one of those American te things I don't understand at all. The STD test required to obtain a marriage license. What the fuck? Uh, that's... Why would you, why would you need it? What? Okay, whatever. <laughs> I, I, I don't, I don't even know. If one of you knows, please leave me a comment. What? Why would? Wh why would you need to have an STD test before getting married, or before? Why would you need to show that to the government before getting a marriage license? I don't understand it. Okay. In recent years, state funding for HIV/AIDS programs has gone up considerably, along with the proportion of homosexual-related cases. According to the Department of Public Health, even though the total number of new case diagnoses has declined, the proportion caused by male homosexual behavior rose by over 30%. Thus, for the last several years, the state has budgeted 30 to 35 million per year for these programs. This dwarfs spending on any other viral disease that we are aware of. Uh, uh, what? So, okay, total number of HIV diagnosis has declined, and uh, state funding for programs about that has gone up, so that seems sort of a correlation, maybe? The proportion caused by male homosexual behavior ro has risen. So... Uh, 
I'm, I'm I'm trying to understand. I'm trying to sort of figure out which what they're trying to say here. The what? <laughs> Let's see. They're trying to argue that legalizing same-sex marriage has resulted in the uh, gay straight <laughs> proportion of HIV diagnoses to change, even though the total number of diagnoses are down. What? <laughs> I, I, really, there's, there's no link here e either. I don't, I don't understand. I, I don't understand what the proportion between uh, straight and gay age cases. W why is that proportion important? And uh, the pro proportion has risen. Thus, for the last several years, the state has budgeted 30 million. I don't, I don't, I don't understand how the proportion chasing has uh, caused this particular dollar amount. And I don't, this was spending on any other viral disease that we are aware of. I don't also, I have no idea what, what this has to do with anything. Are there, are they trying to say that they should spend more money on, on uh, straight diseases than gay? I don't, Jesus Christ. <laughs> I, I don't think I, I don't think I can make sense of that, that this whole thing here within this video. It's just going to make my brain hurt. Let's move on. A hideously obscene booklet on gay practices created by health officials was given out in a high school, citing the right to marry as one of the important challenges in a place where it's a great time to be gay. The Mass Department of Public Health helped the AIDS Action Committee produce the little black book queer in the 21st century. It was given to teens at Brookline High School. Among other things, it gives tips to boys on how to perform oral sex on other males, masturbate other males, and how to safely have some when he urinate on you for sexual pleasure. It even included a directory of bars in Boston where young men meet for anonymous sex. What? Okay, this... This booklet was distributed to hundreds of kids. Hey, queer boys, welcome to Queer Life. Uh... Let's see. Hey, queer boys, welcome to Queer Life. I don't know if you can read this. I'm not trying to. Read. Is, is this a great time to be gay or what? <laughs> we are faced with important challenges, but queers have never enjoyed more visibility and acceptance than today. Message to your sexual rights and responsibilities. You have the right to enjoy sex without shame or stigma. Yeah. You have the right to save for sex materials that speak to your desires. Yeah. You have the right to take action for your community. Okay. Ah, so okay, so there. How safe is that? Okay, I don't, I don't know if the language here is sort of <laughs> the best possible choice, but uh, there are. Yeah, they're talking about. They're talking about uh, how different kinds of sexual activities are. How uh, how safe they are in regards to. Getting STDs, there's a guide for condoms, yeah, how to use condoms, and, okay, let's see, the, let's see this, the bar list. At times, Boston had more gay bars than it has now, although it is hard to know why, this is some people think that the use of the internet has replaced the bar scene for some people. One thing the bars offer is real people and experiences. Developing a social life and interpersonal communications can be very rewarding, and for better or worse, the bars have been a nexus of gay life for ages. Here is a list of Boston area bars and clubs for the discerning queer boy. These are subject to change, so check the club directory or give the place a call before you head out. So let's let's go back here. What did it say? It even included a directory of bars in Boston where young men meet for anonymous sex. And then we go back here. No, it does not. You fucking liars. It includes a list of gay bars. Is uh there's nothing here about anonymous sex on this page. I don't, at least I don't really see it. 
Like, okay, Avalon, pack your dancing shoes. Do dance floors, lots of cute guys. Dancing young guys and those who like young guys. Crowd has a tendency to be well manicured. Kinda like where James Bond would go if he was queer, stylish piano bar. Okay, for the eagle it says that it's old school cruisy sex charged late at night. Track shows at the shock. Strippers. Okay, at the paradise they have strippers dancing on pool tables and they have porn on the television. Letter denim woof. <laughs> so yeah, this is actually, they are not talking about this. <laughs> the thing is, this whole this whole thing here, it even included a directory of bars where young men meet for anonymous sex. That's bullshit. That's the uh, this website's sort of bias. They are, as usually these types of uh, Christians seem to be, they are the ones who are obsessed with sex. This is a list of people, list of gay bars, because you know, gay, you know, it just might be possible that gay people might like to actually meet other gay people. Okay, and this must be the pornographic part because there's pictures of how to use a condom, and for for some reason, the pictures have a, a, an actual a penis, as it seems to be, because that's usually where condoms are used. At least so I, at least so I think. So this seems to be this seems to be a booklet given to well gay men or gay boys. It was at high, I don't know what the high school age is, but basically it's probably actually I'm not entirely sure, uh, but it's it's given out at a high school. I don't. They're probably not. Uh, they're not. Uh, they're probably not all 18 or whatever the legal age is for whatever stuff, but it's it's information <laughs> to help young gay men. And actually, I'm pretty sure I remember when I was in, uh, actually when I was in like ninth grade, seventh, eighth, ninth grade, I think we had similar kinds of stuff available at the nurse's office in my school and I, I would have, I would have been about 14 to 16 back then and there were booklets about sex and how safe sex is I saw those but no it's not <laughs> it's not hideously obscene <laughs> and uh, let's see among other things it gives tips to boys on how to perform oral sex on other males masturbate other males on how to safely have someone urinate on you for sexual pleasure yeah, because we don't want people getting AIDS, you stupid fucking assholes. <laughs> Dear God. Okay, let's move on to hospitals. Because of the purported necessity to cater to LGBT health issues, nearly every major Boston hospital has become an active supporter of the radical homosexual movement. This includes marching in the gay pride parades, holding homosexual events, and putting on numerous gay health-related seminars. This is one of the most disturbing things that's happened since gay marriage became legal. <laughs> <laughs> Why does it disturb you that they march on a gay pride parade? I don't know what homosexual events even are, but let's see. Let's click on. Okay, this is a PDF, so it's not going to show on this video. Gay health-related seminars. I'm gonna. I'm gonna download this, and I probably shouldn't. Wouldn't show. Yeah, it doesn't show. My uh, recorder is just recording the. Uh, the uh, Chrome here, so it doesn't require record my. PDF. I'm gonna just see the PDF really quickly here. New Health Beth Israel Medical Center receives perfect score on lesbian, gay, bisexual, and transgender equality. Uh, this, is a PDF, this is a press release PDF that the Beth Israel Medical Center, which is probably a hospital, treats treats LGBT people equally. Wow! Wow! Most disturbing, one of the most disturbing things that's happened. Okay, second point. A major Boston hospital threatened to fire a physician when he objected to its promotion of homosexual behavior. What? In 2011, a prominent physician at Beth Israel Deaconess Medical Center objected to the hospital being involved with gay pride activities. 
He also pointed out to his superiors the medical health risks of homosexuality uh, and said that he and others at the hospital considered homosexual acts to be unnatural and immoral. The hospital threatened to fire him, telling him that same-sex marriage is legal and that his comments constituted harassment and discrimination. After a hearing, he was allowed to keep his job, but was told to apologize and keep his opinion on these matters to himself. I don't know what his opinions are, because there's no links here again. But uh, he pointed out the medical health risks of homosexuality to his superiors. Uh, unless the superiors themselves were gay, then I don't know what the point of that is. You, I mean, I would imagine that doctors sort of tend to point out medical health risks of whatever that their patients are up to, right? I don't, I don't see, I don't see how that's a bad thing. And then he said, so that's like, I don't. Actually, okay, that's not the, not the point I'm trying to make here. The point is that uh, many people do things that pose medical health risks. There are like <laughs> homosexuality has risks. Heterosexuality has risks. I, I don't know if you I don't know if these people notice that, but heterosexuals can also get STDs through their heterosexual sex activities. There are many hobbies that have risk health risks. <laughs> many very uh, accept very much accepted hobbies. You could go bi bicycling, biking. You could go ride a bike. That's sort of a hobby that people might do. That has health risks. You might fall over. You might crash into something. You could. Uh, what's a? I'm trying to think. What is like a hobby that uh, Christian people would do? You could go to Bible study. That has health risks, probably. You could get a paper cut from your Bible. You. Could, okay, that's kind of a, kind of ridiculous. But the point is. Just because something has health risks doesn't mean it's a bad thing. You could get hit by a car when you're walking to your Bible study. So anyway, that part doesn't mean anything. He objects to being... Uh, this guy objected to the hospital being involved with gay pride. So that doesn't... That, that I don't see how that's a bad thing. And then he and others at the hospital consider homosexual acts to be unnatural and immoral. <laughs> And then the hospital threatened to fire him. <laughs> I there's no link again, so I can't see what he exactly said, but <laughs> might there might be some issues of tone here, like how he said what he said. Anyway, that's that's very disturbing. <laughs> Moving on. In twenty twelve the Boston Medical Center purchased a prominent full color ad in the Boston Gay Pride guidebook. The content, the entire ad promoted the hospital's STD and AIDS clinics for the Pride participants, particularly its screening services for gonorrhea, chlamydia, syphilis, hepatitis, and HIV. And that's a bad thing, how? Exactly? I mean... Well... <laughs> the hospital... Are they like? It's like. Excuse me. I need to drink a little bit here. I'm getting hoarse from all this talking. It's apparently it's a bad thing to purchase an ad in the Boston Gay Pride guidebook, telling Pride participants that their hospital knows how to treat STDs. Oh dear god. I don't I don't I don't I don't know that's That's horrible. I mean if gay marriage is legalized, which it was, everywhere a hospital may buy ads in a gay pride guidebook. Oh my god. Fucking ridiculous. Okay, let's move on. Domestic violence. Oh dear god. This, this one's gonna hurt. This one's gonna hurt. I can I can barely stand to look at the text. Every year, more state money goes to deal with the high incidence of homosexual domestic violence. Since gay marriage began, Massachusetts has one of the highest proportions of homosexual living living as couples in the country. Duh. Given the extremely dysfunctional nature of homosexual relationships. The Massachusetts, this Massachusetts legislature has felt the need to spend more and more money to deal with that problem. What 
the fuck are you talking about? Uh, <laughs> gay domestic violence programs have also become a major lobbying push in the state house by the homosexual group Mass Equality. In this year, it come from. It comprises a considerable portion of a 5.5 million state budget item. It is up from 100,000. 100. Given the extremely dysfunctional nature of homosexual relationships, the legislator has felt the need to spend more. Uh, Christ, I, I, I'm almost speechless here. I don't just... The only sort of thing that I can grab grab onto here is that uh, every year more, like wait, wait 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 wait, since gay marriage began, Massachusetts has one of the highest proportions of homosexual living as couples. Yeah, because <laughs> okay, I don't I don't actually I, I uh, well first of all I don't know where the stats come that's this stat comes from because there's no links here. I mean, if if it's like a stat on how how many married homosexual couples there are, or something like that, then that's bullshit. I don't know. There might be there might be some uh, there might be some couples that have moved to Massachusetts in order to get married. I can understand that. But if homosexuality, or, or if if like now has happened, they have legalized same-sex marriage everywhere. Even that would stop. And uh, if it's if it's a uh, bad to have one of the highest proportions of homosexuals living as couples, then <laughs> actually legalizing it everywhere else is a good thing, <laughs> because then it wouldn't have probably would not have such a big proportion. And uh, I don't know what the fuck they mean by extremely dysfunctional nature of homosexual relationships. That's just like I mean, there's there's no. Oh fuck, I'm, I'm not even going to make fun of that. That's just fucking stupid. Yeah. Let's move on. Gay domestic partner violence literature funded by the state is now distributed at virtually every public homosexual event, including to children at youth pride events, CLSEN conferences, gay straight alliance high school clubs, and especially at the various events and parades during the gay pride week. Yeah, that seems like a good thing. Uh, literature about... Uh, domestic violence. It has become such a problem that a public candlelight vigil in downtown Boston is held every year by a coalition of Massachusetts homosexual groups to remember victims of recent LGBT intimate partner violence and raise awareness of this important community issue. There's no, there's, there's, there's no links here. There's, I don't. I, I, we're just gonna move on. That's this part's not funny. <laughs> just stupid. Business and employment. All insurance in Massachusetts must now recognize same-sex married couples in their coverage. This includes auto insurance, health insurance, life insurance, etc. Yeah, that seems. That seems very reasonable. Businesses must recognize same-sex married couples in all their benefits, activities, etc., regarding both employees and customers. Yeah, that seems reasonable. People can now get fired from their jobs for expressing religious objections to same-sex marriage. In 2009, a deputy manager at a Brookstone store in Boston was hired, fired from his job for mentioning his belief to another manager who had kept bringing up the subject with him that day. Brooks... Okay, I'm, I'm gonna just... First of all, I'm gonna Google Brookstone because I don't know what that is. Chain of retail stores. Uh, fuck off. Okay, it's a store that sells stuff. Okay. Said his comment was inappropriate because in the state of Massachusetts, same-sex marriage is legal. Gee, I wonder how he actually mentioned his belief. There's once again no link here. Actually, let's Google this. Let's just, because we have a browser here. Let's just see. Okay. Uh, 
Okay, here we go. We're on the, now in the forums of XKCD, which is a fine webcomic. A deputy manager at a Brookstone retail store was fired from his job for telling a visiting manager that he believed her homosexual behavior to be wrong. In here it says, was fired from his job for mentioning his belief to another manager. The incident leading to Vidala's termination began when a visiting manager told Vidala that she was getting married. Vidala congratulated her and asked where he was taking her for the honeymoon. The other manager corrected him, saying, where is she taking me? I didn't say anything. I quickly changed the subject and I kind of went on with the work day, Vidala said. But the manager continued to repeatedly mention her female fiancé throughout the day. Oh god. It made me uncomfortable because I see that sort of behavior as immoral personally. And so when the manager mentioned her marriage for what Vidala says was at least the fourth time. Yeah, that's... <laughs> that's uh, repeatedly... Oh, fuck's sake. Repeatedly mentioning throughout the day, that was the f only the fourth time. Regarding homosexuality, I believe that that's bad stuff, Vidala says, he told the manager. He says that he was going to continue by explaining that he would prefer her not to bring it up in the workplace, but she started laughing. Get over it, HR buddy, keep your, HR buddy, keep your opinions to yourself, she said. A few hours later, Vidala was suspended. Uh... Okay, okay. Ba, 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 ba. I still don't actually know, know if that's all he said. I don't. I'm not sure. Okay, actually, let's let's give, let's let's Google a little bit more because I have the name now, Peter Vidala. Uh, Advocate.com. Let's see. If, I mean, I, I'm, just, I'm just. I wish to know what he exactly said. <laughs> Regarding your homosexuality. Okay, Vidala said he felt. He felt God wanted me to express how I felt about the matter, so he told her. Regarding your homosexuality, I think that's bad stuff. The hu woman re responded, Human resources, buddy, keep your opinions to yourself. Okay, the letter, termination letter. While you are entitled to your own beliefs, imposing them upon others in the workplace is not acceptable, and in this case, by telling a colleague that she is deviant and immoral. Ha ha ha! <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> so. He's not actually, not actually telling everything. <laughs> everything. Uh... According to Peter Vidala, he says regarding your homosexuality, I think that's bad stuff. However, the letter says by telling a colleague that she is deviant and immoral. <laughs> yeah, this this not like this not like word word for word. It's the same thing. <laughs> Uh, bottom line is that this guy called her, called his boss, sorry, his boss, deviant and immoral, and he got fired. Oh dear. The wedding industry is required to serve the homosexual community if requested. Wedding photographers must accept same-sex marriage events or be held liable for discrimination. Yup, that seems reasonable to me. Businesses are often tested for tolerance by homosexual activists. Groups of homosexual activists go into restaurants or bars and publicly kiss and fondle each other to test whether the establishment demonstrates sufficient equality, now that homosexual marriage is legal. They can, then they report tolerance violators to authorities and businesses can be fined and punished. In fact, more and more overt displays of homosexual affection are seen in public places across the state to reinforce marriage equality. Oh my god. Oh my god, gay people can kiss in public. Horrible. <laughs> okay, let's move on. Legal profession. How many? Let's see how many more of these we have. 
Oh, for fuck's sake, we're not even halfway down here. And I can't actually see where... This is gonna be a long video. Oh well, you can watch this in parts. YouTube, if you're uh, logged into YouTube, I think it remembers where you left off. Or you can just quit watching, because this is not gonna get any better than this. <laughs> Legal profession and judicial system. The Massachusetts Bar Examiner tests lawyers on their knowledge of the same-sex marriage law. In, tw in 2007, a Boston man failed the Massachusetts Bar Exam because he refused to answer a question about homosexual marriage. What the fuck is... <laughs> yeah, because it's the law, then lawyers should know the law. What the fuck? Uh, claiming his refusal to answer a question caused him to flunk. Dunn scored a 268 on the bar exam, just missing a passing grade of 270. Yeah, you didn't flunk because you didn't answer that. You flunked. Because, I, I mean, unless... Unless he got every other question right and still flunked, then that would be an issue. But no, you just didn't get enough points in your bar exam, you fucking idiot. Okay, moving on. In many firms, lawyers in Massachusetts practicing family law must now attend seminars on homosexual marriage issues regarding homosexual families are now firmly entrenched in the Massachusetts legal system. In addition, there are now several homosexual judges overseeing the courts. Oh my god, gay people can be judges now. Yeah, just <laughs> In 2011, the governor appointed Barbara Lenk, a married lesbian activist, to be a state Supreme Court justice. She has said that the interpretation of law evolves and develops because minority groups see certain things differently based on their own experiences. Yeah, so this whole this whole section... I'm trying to point at my screen, but you can't see that. Use the mouse, use the mouse. This whole... No. This whole section here... Is basically meaningless because what they're saying is that if uh, if same-sex marriage is legalized then it will be part of the law who would have thought that <laughs> I mean lawyers have to know the law to pass a bar exam oh my god adoption and birth certificates let's I, I'm gonna try to power through this but let's just skip let's try to make this a little bit faster now Adoption and birth certificates. In the year after the gay marriage ruling, the states... Uh, the emphasis was that those working with children must be trained that homosexuality and transgenderism are normal. Yeah, because it is, because it is normal, you fucking idiots. Homosexual married couples can now demand to be allowed to adopt children through any agency. Yeah. Why wouldn't they? Adoption agencies have said that 40% of their adoptions are to homosexual couples. Anecdotal reports also indicate that many adoption agencies now favor homosexuals over normal couples. Yeah, anecdotal reports, fuck you. That's not evidence. 06, the Massachusetts Department of Social Services honored two men married to each other as their parents of the year. Yeah, okay, so they're good parents. What's the problem? According to news, <laughs> okay, this, okay, let's just let's not skip any bits. This it says the men had adopted a baby through DSS against the wishes of the baby's birth parents, and that seems like bullshit because uh, I, I I think I think I'm I'm not gonna click. That. That's just too much of a quagmire. But I think the issue here is that if you give up your child for adoption, you <laughs> then don't really have a say on. <laughs> who adopts your child <laughs> and if you're this homophobic then do fucking bad maybe you should be happy that your kid is being raised by someone more tolerant according to news reports the day after the, the, that adoption was final DSS approached the men about adopting a second child well duh they're the parents of the year <laughs> maybe they would be good with two kids as well State-funded adoption resource exchange has been boosting GLBT family formation and holds adoption parties where homosexual couples have been encouraged to attend and see available children in person. 
Yeah. I'm pretty sure they actually... Uh, I'm pretty sure they actually uh, encourage all sorts of couples. Yeah, it actually says here, homosexual couples have been encouraged to attend along with others and see children in person. Yeah, so they... <laughs> So they encourage all sorts of couples to adopt children, because that's what they do. Birth certificates in Massachusetts have been changed from mother and father to mother parent and father parent. Two men or two women can now be listed as the parents on birth certificates. Homosexuals who adopt can revise children's existing birth certificates. I don't know what uh, revising birth certificates actually means in real life, but uh, yeah. Because if you have a gay couple, then they, if you have two men, for example, then one of, I don't think either one of them wants to be called mother on a birth certificate. So fuck you, that seems like a reasonable thing to do. Duh. A court ruled that if a child is born of a same-sex marriage, there is no need for adoption by a non-biological parent. Thus they would both be listed as the parents on the child's birth certificate without any formal proceedings necessary. What the what fuck proceedings? I don't. What born of a same-sex marriage? Yeah. Do you need? If you're a straight couple, do you need a formal proceedings to list both parents as parents? What the fuck is wrong with you guys? Okay, moving on. Government mandates. Marriage licenses now have party A and party B instead of husband and wife. Imagine having a marriage license like that. I don't think I have to imagine. I think we can actually see one here. Yeah, there it is. Full name party A, full name party B. Yeah, that's... Yeah. Once again, if you have two men, then I don't think either one is the wife. If you have two women, I don't think either one is the husband. In 2004, Governor Mitt Romney ordered judges of the peace to perform homosexual marriages when requested, requested or be fired. Yeah, because I think that's their job. No. Several justices immediately decided to resign. That order still stands. Also, town clerks were forced by the governor's office to issue marriage licenses to same-sex couples. Because it's their fucking job! <laughs> this, this has actually come up right now in other states lately, because when uh, every state now has to accept, then accept same-sex marriage and some clerks are not issuing licenses to same-sex couples. Even though it's their fucking job, and the Supreme Court has ruled that it's constitutional. In 2008, Massachusetts changed the state Medicare laws to include homosexual married couples in the coverage. Yeah, that seems reasonable. <laughs> oh my god, it's, it almost, it's like that's a bad thing. The public square. Since gay marriage began, public gay pride events have become more prominent in the public square. There are more politicians and corporations participating, and even police organizations take part, and the envelope gets pushed further and further. For example, the annual profane dyke march through downtown Boston and the 2008 transgender parade that included bare-chested women who have had their breasts surgically removed so they could become men. Uh, what the fuck? Yeah, the escape pride parades. Get the fuck over it. Church is being harassed. Yeah, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna skip this all together, it's just... <laughs> I'm just gonna skip that, you can go come to the page and read that for yourself, I don't... I, I don't want to anymore, this video is getting too long and I just simply don't want to. The media, the Boston media regularly features articles and news stories using homosexual married couples where regular married couples would normally be used. Normally. It's equal, they insist, so there must be no difference in how marriage is portrayed. Also, the newspaper advice columns now deal with homosexual marriage issues and how to properly accept it. Yeah, that seems reasonable. <laughs> A number of news reporters and TV anchors are out homosexual, at least one openly married, who march in the gay pride parades and publicly participate in other homosexual events. Oh my god! Listen, people, if you legalize same-sex marriage, then <laughs> your TV news reporters might come out of the closet. Awful, that's horrible. Politics, a climate of fear has kept politicians at all levels from disagreeing with or criticizing same-sex marriage since it became legal. Public officials are afraid of being accused of wanting to take away rights. 
uh, duh. Yes, they will be accused of that if they want to take away rights from people. Those who support traditional marriage rarely discuss it publicly. Oh, how I wish that was true. And this fear has expanded to suppress any meaningful debate on all homosexual related issues. No, actually, I think gay people can can debate their own issues without any fear. Additionally, it has brought a feeling of intimidation among pro-family people across the state. Well, that's just like... <laughs> oh, God. Feeling of intimidation. Oh, dear. The Massachusetts Republican establishment has become arguably the most pro-gay marriage GOP in America. The state GOP House and Senate leaders now both publicly support gay marriage, as did the recent Massachusetts GOP candidates for governor and lieutenant governor. GOP candidates for office are told not even to discuss it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they're told not to discuss it because pro they're... Because probably they're... Uh, <clears throat> their opinions are such that will make people not want to vote for them. Anyway, I don't see how that's a I don't see how that's a problem. If if you don't like GOP then you're f free to vote for any other party. I think I believe. That's I don't I don't I don't see how that's a problem for any of us, really. In April 09, the chairman of the Mass Republican Party told a homosexual newspaper that the GOP would no longer oppose gay marriage. Good. Then Chairman Jennifer Nasur, interviewed on the front page of Bay Windows, assured the gay community that the state GOP would steer clear of social issues such as opposition to same-sex marriage and abortion. The newly elected Chairman Bob Magin does not talk about the issue. Yeah, okay. Every Massachusetts statewide elected official and member of Congress, but one, now publicly supports gay marriage. The one apparent holdout Republican U.S. Senator Scott Brown strenuously avoids the issue, saying that it's settled law and not worth fighting over. Well, he seems smart, at least in that respect. I don't actually see how... Uh, how should I put this? Uh, these seem to be issues within the Republican Party, if you are members of that party. I don't see how... Uh, I mean, again, the sort of... Uh, the purpose of this whole thing here is to warn what would what will happen if uh, same-sex relationships are or same-sex marriages are legalized, and uh, these are just stuff that happened inside the Republican Party, and I don't see how those are relevant to people outside of that party. Rule of law: same-sex marriage came to Massachusetts through a radical court's narrow ruling. Fuck off. Because of that, there's an often depressing sense of helplessness that, helplessness that pervades the issue. The marriage statute was never changed and it has been convincingly argued that the whole process was in violation of the state constitution. The governor simply went along. The legislature acted to block popular votes uh, on two separate causes amendments protecting marriage after sufficient signatures had been gathered for each. The rule of law seems further lost with every new outrage imposed on the people. Wait, 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 wait. The legislature acted to block popular votes on two separate constitutional amendments protecting marriage. After sufficient signatures had been gathered for each. So what you're saying is that the democratically elected... Uh, People in the legislature voted no when you tried to when you tried to take away people's people's human rights. Wow. You know, I think there's I, I think I've heard some people say something about this issue. It's something like uh, 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 that, like this is America. If you don't like this, get the fuck out, or something like that. You know, again. <laughs> And uh, a radical court's narrow ruling. I don't know how the court <laughs> is uh, composed, but I would think there's some element of democracy involved there. And I don't care how narrow it is, it's still probably a majority who who won the, won the rule, so... <laughs> so it's all just fucking bullshit. Uh, even the Massachusetts Law Library shows no law legalizing same-sex marriage, only a court opinion. It is a dangerous precedent to allow such sweeping traditional activism to stand as law, enabling everything that has followed from it. 
It should serve as a warning. Are you fucking kidding me? I'm pretty sure that's how the whole legal system works in there. You don't have to spell everything in law if you have Supreme Court's decisions, then... <laughs> that's... Oh, fuck. Let's read the conclusion. In conclusion, same-sex marriage hangs over society, hammering citizens with the force of law. Once it gets a foothold, society becomes more oppressive. No, it fucking doesn't. Unfortunately, it was imposed on the people of Massachusetts through a combination of radical, arrogant judges and pitifully cowardly politicians. The homosexual movement has used that combination to its continued advantage across the country. <laughs> Dude, you voted those politicians. Vote someone fucking... <laughs> vote someone braver, you asshole. It's pretty clear that this radical movement is obsessed with marriage not because large numbers of homosexuals actually want to marry each other, a small percentage actually marry. In fact, over the last several months, the Sunday Boston Globe's marriage section hasn't had any photos of homosexual marriages. At first it was full of them. Well, duh. Of course there's a spike once it's legalized, you asshole. Research shows that homosexual relationships are fundamentally dysfunctional on many levels, and real marriage as we know it isn't something they can achieve or even truly desire. Yeah, you don't have a link to any research here, so fuck off. Also, I don't know, like, it says here, it's pretty clear that this radical movement is obsessed with marriage, not because large numbers of homosexuals actually want to marry each other. This, uh, this uh, sort of sentence structure usually continues with a but, you see, not because X, but because Y. What's the Y? I don't, there's no Y here. There's no, uh, there's no other reason given here. I mean, they don't even want to marry each other. They just want to... <laughs> then what the fuck do they want, you asshole? Tell me. The push for gay marriage is really, is really is about... Dude, you revised this four years after and you still didn't get, catch the typo here. It is really is about putting the legal stamp of approval on homosexuality and forcing its acceptance on otherwise unwilling citizens and our social, political and commercial institutions. Uh, well, kind of, yeah. But it's also about letting them get married if they want to, you asshole. To the rest of America, you've been forewarned. <laughs> Oh dear god. That was fun, wasn't it? Yep, you can actually buy this booklet, it's two bucks each. It's one buck each if you order a hundred or more. There's even a Chinese translation available. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna put the link below this video, you can read this for yourself if you... If you wish, if you feel like you need to do penance for some horrible thing that you have done. Now, let's go back to the lake. This, uh, I don't remember what which lake this is. But this is in my hometown. It's a nice lake. It's uh... Oh, fuck. Anyway, as you must have heard by now, the Supreme Court of the United States uh, ruled that it's unconstitutional to deny, same uh, deny homosexual people the right to marry. And thank God for that. This is me done for this issue. I hope you guys have a fantastic day.